I'm in this part of the wood that we just refenced. So a lot of monoculture, though next to the road, there's a more growth. And I saw this. This is a wonderful fresh nest. And whenever I see this, I know it's a magpie has uh, stolen the either the fledgling or the eggs and torn it, literally torn it out of the tree and disfigured it. And so that is a beautiful, beautiful nest and lack of offspring because of the magpies. If it wasn't the wind, we haven't had a huge amount of wind recently and it's a fresh, freshly fallen. So that's very sad always to see evidence of magpies hunting for eggs or fledglings. So it's lovely seeing the woods now with the foliage coming in so that you can distinctly tell now what is spindle, what is beech, etc. You can see there is a spruce right there but it's surrounded by beech and the beech leaves and their babies. They're always so beautiful. But this is going to grow in biodiversity when I get the sheep in to graze it, which is going to be so exciting. Oh, evidence of a badger. That's why they're so interested in it. The badger is pulling this timber apart, getting the insects. So that was full of insects. And the badgers and their big claws pull it apart. They've been pulling apart that tree trunk there, for the insects. There are some magnificent ferns in this bit of wood. Here you can see a hedgehog hotel that was created a while ago by me. There's felled trees, and here you see young trees coming in this area. There's um, hawthorn. This is a beech. I'm under. Over there is a plains tree. More plains trees. More hawthorn. But uh, I'm loving the ferns unfurling. They're so magnificent. And here's um, another fern another variety of fern. But this is all, this is very close to the edge of the road. Uh, Java, come in here, come on. That's too close to the road. This bit of wall we had to pull back because it was gonna fall into the road. It got very, it was very precarious. So maybe one day we'll reinstate that bit of wall. But what I'm hoping to do is plant on the road side of the fence, as close to it, some hawthorn some crab apple, uh, hazel, things like that. But look at that big, huge ash tree. Hasn't, no, it's not an ash tree. I wonder what that tree is. It's not leafed out yet. Maybe it's, I don't think it's an oak. The oak trees are coming out. That's, that's an oak. No, that's an ash. Sorry, my tree isn't very good. Anyway, back into our field and one of the wood piles from the timber, the dead ash trees, we had to chop down. There were so many of them up against the road and we had to chop them down because you don't want to be liable for them if they fall across the road. Now I've got to close this gate because this is the field where the sheep are going to come in. I'm going to move them off the driveway into this field, this hill field here. It's got a really, really steep hill. It's the field of the great oak, by the way. The great oak tree is all the way over there. It's wonderful to see our native uh, cherry, the bird cherry, coming into bloom. It's just budding up. So far, oh, there we go. There's a sign 
of the bird cherry moth has laid its eggs. There you go. So it's laid them in there and spun a web and protecting its offspring. And this is vital for biodiversity. Here's another place. Look, there's a bird cherry moth. So this tree is a hugely vital source of food for biodiversity. The bird cherry moth lays its eggs. The caterpillars will eat all these leaves, but this tree reproduces a second growth of leaves because it knows it's gonna be eaten by the bird cherry moth caterpillars. The caterpillars then weave a web all over the tree trunks for their cocoons and when they emerge is the same time that bats are weaning their offspring. So bird cherry moths, a lot of people end up poisoning the caterpillars because they think they're killing the bird cherry tree, but they're not. The bird cherry tree is a vital part of our biodiversity. And look at that. We need more of these in the hedgerows. They're so beautiful, so beautiful. These are the woods that I graze the sheep in on a rotational basis in years. But look at this. There's a huge amount of biodiversity in here compared to the ivy filled woods that I'm now gonna be working on. See, there's cleavers and nettles and cow parsley and ground elder, which a lot of people don't like, but that still feeds wildlife. There's the bluebells. And you come down here and there's an elder and my beautiful bird cherry, or one of them. And this little clearing, a tree fell, and I've planted this tree here. It's gonna be some beautiful autumn color, I hope. This dead ash tree here is full of bats and it has at least two beehives in it. And the holly, elder, look at that. So incredible, such an incredible amount of biodiversity just in this little clearing. And it is, the ground is not covered in ivy, the monoculture of ivy. So many environmentalists and people think ivy is brilliant. It's not. It can become an overwhelming monoculture. This is what biodiversity is, so that pollinators can feed more than once a year, and birds can feed more than once a year. Look at this bird cherry. Look at how high up those are. That bird cherry was probably planted by my grandfather or my great-grandfather. So biodiversity, in this day and age, we have to manage it. And I use the sheep to manage our biodiversity, to graze these woodlands so that the ivy doesn't take over. Look at the bluebells. Oh, I'll have to take you up to where the lilies are. There's no pathways in these woods. I should probably make pathways for my tour groups who are interested in, um, you know, biodiversity or what the biodiversity is that we have. This is laurel, which can overwhelm a place. I'm slowly getting rid of this. It's taking years because my grandfather planted it as a boundary to the neighbors. But the woodland lilies, I'm gonna go up and show you that. Look at the bluebells. Look at that. Cleavers, bluebells, ground elder. This is a big hogweed. And we're gonna go past, we're going past, this is my big hedgehog hotel, which has several different entrances that the hedgehogs use and the badgers don't get in there to eat them. So they grow, raise their young in there. Let's see if I can see, look at this. This is a lime tree. This is a baby lime tree. Hopefully the dogs aren't stepping on the, this is a cherry tree, not a bird cherry tree. Now just in here, oh look, here's the Solomon seal. 
Look at the Solomon seal. They're so beautiful. Look at that. Now in here, somewhere, are the woodland lilies, besides the Solomon seal. This is the lime tree again. Let's see, where are the lilies? They're somewhere right in here. Nyeh, nyeh. Oh, there, I see one. I don't want to step on another one as I go towards. Here it is. There's the lily. It hasn't flowered yet. There's a whole series of them here. Hopefully I'm not stepping on any of them. I just know they're in this area. Again, elderflower. I better take the dogs out of here because they're, they're gonna step on my lilies and I don't have a huge quantity of them and I'm trying to get them to multiply. Brindle, no, 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 no. Oh, bugger. Don't. Come on, let's go. I don't want to step. Oh, there's one right there. Don't step on that lily, please. Good girl. Yeah, come on. Out. Good girl. See, there's one. It hasn't flowered yet. Yeah, good boy. Okay, I love Solomon seal. Solomon seal is so beautiful. And we have loads of it through the woods. Look, right there. With the cow parsley and Solomon seal. You can't beat that. Oh, I do love this time of year with the cow parsley. I've got to move the sheep now quicker than I thought because somebody's calling, so I can't put them where I want to put them. I'm just going to open them, open the gate into the little field, into the field to the right, and the flock can all go travel into there so that I can open the gates up to the road. Hey girls, look at them all. The long acre is well grazed. So my security is, you know, a good bit of baling twine. <laughs> I'm getting this all tangled up. There. Now. Oh. Okay. Hey, girls. Oh. They'll be fine coming out into this field for a little while. You're sounding pathetic in your Baha'i. You're so beautiful, Lilac. Okay, the easiest way to do this is I'm gonna walk to the bottom of the driveway. It's actually lovely seeing them all coming up the driveway. Come on, girls. No, you're not going somewhere else. We're not going somewhere else. We're going into that field. Okay, I better go down to the driveway. Here comes an alpaca charging up the driveway. Two alpaca charging up the driveway. Baby alpaca is probably all the way down at the bottom lying somewhere. Okay, guys, you're coming in here.
is a good regrowth. So they're not going to go hungry. You're coming the wrong way. You have to go that way. Go on. Go that way. Go on. Hey, Incat. No. Come back here. No. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to have to go down to the bottom and herd them up. So I brought them through the field. And you can see this horse parsley is completely decimated. And the bluebells. The only things left standing are the nettles. You can see the nettles here. But they've really decimated it. But that's fine. That's what it's there for. Isn't that right, Inkadink? Come on. Come on, everybody. Let's go up. Come on, pups. Java. Ah, ah, ah. Come on. You get away from the road. Good boy. Come on. Ah, ah. Shh, shh, shh. Come on. Leave it. Good boy. Okay. Heard them. Come on, pups. You can see the edges are very nearly mown. They'll do with another mow later on. Oh, I might let them out again tonight. They're in this field. You can see a lot of them are already over there. But some people, some people are not getting up out of bed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ugh. Come on. Come on. Java, 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 Java. Come back here. Come back here, Java. Good boy. Inca, come back here. Come on. Come on, Grace. Come on. No longer breakfast in bed. Java, leave it. Come on. Ugh. Come on. Yeah. Java, Inca, come back here. Come on. You can see the other ones are already out in the field. Come on. People are going to be arriving. Come on. Come on. I know your sore feet. I will treat you. Java, no, come back here. Leave them be, Java. Enough. Leave them be. Hey you, where are you going? Come on, get out. Java, Java, leave it, leave it. Okay. You have to move a little bit further. There we go, Java, come on, Java. Come on, leave it. So they're all there. Java, come back here. Come on. And it's beginning to rain again. Thank you.